So um, our next talk is a tour on the VCGP website. And our speaker is Dr. Michael J. Dark. Uh, Dr. Michael J. Dark is an anatomic pathologist and the executive director of the Veterinary Diagnostic Labs at the University of Florida College of Veterinary Medicine. He received his DVM from Michigan State University in 2001 and his PhD in bacterial genomics and tick-borne diseases in 2008 from Washington State University. He's on the board of directors for the Davis Thompson Foundation, serving as the foundation's webmaster. Aside from work, he enjoys spending time with his much better half, Carolyn and their three kids. So, Dr. Dark, uh, thank you and over to you. Thanks. Uh, give me a moment to share my screen here. There we go. Okay. Uh, just confirming everyone can see the web browser. Yes. Okay. So I, I'm going to quickly go over the website and give a, a quick intro to some of the resources we have on there. The other thing I just wanted to say briefly uh, along the lines of what Don was talking about is uh, we would really love to have folks who are interested help out. Uh, don't feel like you have to be some expert in veterinary oncologic pathology. Uh, I'm an idiot and they still let me help out. So uh, it, there's plenty of work to do. And if you are uh, early in your career or a resident, this is a great way to get in on the ground floor of something that's really important uh, and that can really help um, uh, treatment of animals. So, okay, so when you go to the homepage, uh, vcgp.org, or uh, uh, I'm trying to remember what the longer one is, uh, this gives you a brief intro on sort of what the aim of the website is. Uh, there's a longer introduction below. Um, we've got recent changes to the website, the longer introduction into what the goals are, what we're trying to do, um, contact information for folks if you have suggestions or questions. Uh, then we get into the definitions, so abbreviations and definitions that are used across the website. For each of these, uh, and it's the same for the guidelines and protocols section, there's a link, and so if you open the link, it takes you to the document. Um, and I, again, have to thank the Davis Thompson Foundation for hosting all of this. Uh, the website is hosted uh, via um, the Davis Thompson Foundation, and then we're using their cloud server to host the documents. Um, so when you click link, it brings up the actual document itself. Um, and then that lets you go through and uh, see the whole document. If you're just interested in what the latest changes are, um, you can click that. And then uh, we also have a presentation on all changes. So um, it, the goal is to say uh, what's been changed recently and then what's the history of changes over the life of the document. Mike, there was one request to, could you expand the the image. I don't know if someone's looking on small. I, I can try. Is that better? Sorry, I should have the chat up. My apologies. Okay. Uh, so for guidelines, uh, we have the various guidelines, mitotic count, mitotic figure morphology. Oh, if it's, how's that? Is that, uh, Christoph, is that better? Okay. Uh, guidelines for mitotic count, mitotic figure morphology. And again, the same kind of uh, set of links, a link to the document, a link to the latest changes, and then the whole revision history. So um, we have documents that are in progress. So the documents that we realize we absolutely need and are planning to get out. Um, and then protocols, uh, as Don was mentioning, the protocols are trying to collect uh, an entire set of information for a particular tumor, uh, ultimately with the goal of being able to use those to determine what features are prognostically relevant. So um, 
if we just briefly bring up the soft tissue uh, sarcoma protocol, which I know people will be talking on a little later, uh, these are fairly detailed and may not be what everyone wants to use for every diagnostic case. Um, but it is a good starting point, especially if you're looking at setting up studies, looking at prognosis. So, um, okay, if we go all the way back to the top, and I get some windows out of my way here. Uh, if we go to the menu, uh, there are links to various um, uh, pages. So if we link to, uh, there's links to the definitions, guidelines, and protocols in the menu, so you can always quickly get back to those. If we go to the Get Involved page, um, uh, right now, we've set up several mailing lists, uh, and we'll probably set up some more. So if you're interested in a particular area, if you put your name and email address, uh, and you can pick one or multiple of these areas that you're interested in, and then solve the math problem to prevent uh, people from spamming, it will subscribe you to the mailing list. It'll send you an email saying, uh, you've been subscribed, uh, click here if you want to unsubscribe. Um, and that lets people who are interested in particular areas communicate uh, to get started in, in working out where we're going with these. Um, and eventually, these are other areas that we're looking, on, uh, looking at. So we're looking for folks who are interested in developing protocols for specific tumors, um, because clearly uh, we've got soft tissue sarcoma uh, and a couple of melanoma protocols, but uh, there's plenty of tumors that are left. Um, and eventually, we're also looking to gather and submit case materials. So setting up the biobank um, and, and getting material that would be useful for that. Um, and we're still working on getting the forms and all that uh, together. Um, but that's something that we're interested in having people uh, useful for. Sorry, Bruce. Uh, and finally, uh, we Again, we'll talk about this a little more in a couple of weeks in the synoptic reporting talk, but we've got a couple of examples because synoptic reporting is not something that's really been uh, talked about much in veterinary medicine. So we've got a couple of examples here. Uh, this is a very simple sample uh, synoptic report for uh, veterinary medicine, just a, a generic nonspecific example. Sorry. Um, that could be used for just about any tumor. And then if we go back, we also have a link to some human examples. And uh, again, this is uh, coming back to CAP and we'll talk about College of American Pathologists in a couple of weeks again, um, but they have, uh, this website has synoptic report templates for all of the different synoptic reports that College of American Pathologists has. So if I click CNS tumors, uh, they have how to use the report generator, but then they've got all the different elements that are required and it lets you produce a synoptic report. So this is more so folks can see when we're talking about a synoptic report, what are we talking about, what's involved and uh, uh, what needs to happen there. Okay. Uh, and finally, uh, I guess the last two sites, uh, the biobank, uh, has been set up, and this is in large part thanks to the support of JPC, so we need to make sure we thank them. Um, but we're looking to collect a set of cases with prognostic information uh, so that we can accumulate a set of cases to be used to uh, validate and compare studies. So uh, we have more on this coming soon, but that's, that's getting started, and so we're looking for folks who are interested in that. Uh, and finally, the quiz that you took, uh, or that several of you took uh, before the presentations here, um, that's here. There's also a similar quiz on lymphovascular invasion. So if you're interested, um, both of those are linked here. Uh, and at the end of, of each of those quizzes, it shows the results from all the folks who have taken it so far. So. And as far as veterinary students uh, who might be interested, to be honest, we're really interested in anybody who's, who's willing to help out. So uh, if you have an interest, please contact us and we're happy to have folks who are interested. Absolutely. All right, thanks folks.